Okay, welcome back to Living Off Grid. Uh, got a nice little project today. We're going to be adding a tow board to the sawmill. Uh, as you can see here, I'm setting on uh, three poplar logs that came from the same tree. The bottom log and the middle log have very little taper. The upper log here, uh, even though it does need to be trimmed on one end, it's a good bit larger at this end than that end. So if I was to throw that up on the sawmill and cut it, um, one, I'm not going to get as much material out of that board as I possibly could, but also if I'm cutting something like a 4x4, four four, a 6x6, six six, or an 8x8, eight eight, I want that middle of the log called the pith, this area here that's darker in the middle, I want it in a level plane. If that runs out one end of that 4x4 uh, four four or 6x6, six six, whatever it is, um, that log or beam will tend to bow or bend as it dries. Um, makes for a lot more stable log. Also, when I'm cutting, um, I would end up losing, I have less scrap, if you will, uh, cutting that way. I can get more out of a log. Um, now, poplar doesn't tend to taper a whole lot, but I've got oak and cherry and walnut and hickory. All those trees do tend to taper a little bit more than poplar. So let's go over here to the sawmill and we'll get right to it. Okay, so the product I've chosen to make a tow board out of is this scissor jack from Harbor Freight. Uh, I've got it fully extended here. This is how much reach you can get it. This one is a two and a half ton. It's designed to uh, stabilize a camper or RV or something like that. And uh, we're going to use it as a, uh, as a tow board in our sawmill. So what I've got to do to make that happen is I have to create a mount for it and I'm going to put a wood block on top. That wood block is what's going to be coming in contact with the log. I may or may not put a little bit of a V-groove in that to kind of help center the log. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it's going to be a pretty simple project. I'm not going to permanently fix it in. Uh, I've got these cinder blocks here. I'm going to make it to where it fits in between the two rails and just sits on that cinder block because I have another set down here and down there. So my thought is, is maybe I can move this around a little bit. I typically like to put the small end of my logs up toward the head of the sawmill so that I can see what I'm working with. And uh, because all your dimensions that you're going to get out of your cant, it's going to come off the small end, not the large end. A lot of that bit on the large end is going to end up being waste. So that's why I like to have the saw, excuse me, the log up this way on the small end. It gives me the true size I'm working with. Okay. Um, without further ado, follow along and we'll get right to it. Okay, so to begin with, I need to put some holes in the bottom of the jack here at the base so I can mount it to the board that I've got down here. And then I need to mount this block. There's already holes here. Uh, these would be the holes you would normally attach to the bottom side of your camper. Um, but first, let's get to drilling these holes so we can put it down there. I'm going to be using wood screws to put it into that block instead of bolts. Um, the wood screws I'm using are just basically deck screws. I've got a drill bit here that's appropriately sized. Should be all right. So let's get to it. This board here that I have, it's just a sacrificial board. Uh, I don't really care about it. It's kind of moldy and old. It's been sitting down here a while. And um, this drill bit's working pretty good. Titanium nitride. They cut through a lot of stuff. Alright, two holes down. And I'm putting my holes as far out as I can go to create a little bit more stability. Um, most of your pressure is going to be downward, so I'm not terribly worried, but I like things to be stable if I can. That one walked on me. Let me get changed positions here. All 
All right, that's done. That was quick and easy. Hey, if you've got a Ryobi uh, power tool set, I have a recommendation for you. I got these on Amazon. This is a six amp hour lithium battery. Fits all your one plus Ryobi, 18 volts. Good Lord, this thing will run for days. I got two of them, cost me about 60 bucks, which is cheaper than you can buy the regular one and a half amp hours for. And a good full charge. I forget the last time I charged these things. Uh, when, have the, when have you ever heard that from using a power tool, right? I'm used to changing batteries all the time. Not with those batteries. If I can find the link, I'll, I'll put it in the description. Okay, so now I've got to orientate this in the location that I want so that it's not hitting anything. But I think first, because I'm never going to raise it that high, I actually need to take it down a good bit. And because uh, this, this long screw here is going to interfere with this beam, the support bunk, if I don't. So give me a few minutes and I'll be right back because this will take a second. Okay, so I flipped the camera around the other direction and I've got this compressed down a little bit. I can work with it now. Um, I've changed my mind. I'm going to make this side here the base and this larger piece the upper side. Um, got my reasons for that. But anyway, um, first thing I need to do, this is the board that's going to bridge the two cinder blocks. We're going to mount it to that. And how I'm going to do that, we're going to set that right on there. It has, I don't know if you can see it from the camera view, but it's got four holes on each side. And that's for mounting to the bottom side of an RV or camper. Those holes are a little bit big for wood screws. So to counter that, I'm using this small nut here that's large enough to capture the head. It also counts for that countersink that I've got here. So we've got four of those we're going to put in. And uh, on each side, should be pretty stable. So all I got to do is line this up just a little bit. It does not have to be perfect. And away we go. There's one. Do one on each side first to kind of get it set. And here's the other. Now this, this is by no means a permanent mounting. Like I said before, this is something that I can move around a little bit until I get comfortable with it. When I find where I really want it, I may come back later and uh, mount it one end or the other uh, permanently or semi-permanently. Okay. Now, um, while I do this, I want to talk about screws. These are the star bit screws. I, I've i always hated Phillips head screws. They strip out real easy. And especially if you take them in and out more than once. And um, I started using star bits when I built my deck for the camper. And I, I just, I tell you. I'm very happy with the way that they work. Um, I have zero trouble out of them. I could take them in and out quite a few times if I have to. Like say, when we moved the camper, I had to move the deck and I just took the legs apart and moved it and set it back up in no time. However, if I'd done that with uh, Phillips head screws, Inevitably one or two of those screws at some point would have stripped out on me and then that would have been a fight To get that back together or apart either one All right, so this is the last one here And uh, another thing I can't live without You got your regular drill And you got your hammer drill If you're gonna be doing wood screws or woodwork, especially long bolts and screws Get you a hammer drill effortless compared to a regular drill that you kind of have to push real hard on 
Now obviously you need a regular drill for drilling with holes and things like that. Okay, so now we've got a good permanent mount or good mounting here that's going to fit down in between. The next thing I need to do is I need to flip this over and I need to mount that block to this side. So we're going to do that. Try to line it up a little bit. Again, it's not rocket science. We're not trying to make it perfect. I got over making things perfect a long time ago. I do like things to be nice and clean and orderly. But perfect. Yeah, I ain't got time for that. I have a full-time job. And I do all this in my spare time, so. <laughs> Alright. I'll tell you something else that these hammer drills are good for. I took a lawnmower deck apart and getting off the blades. Normally you have to hold the restrain the blade or the pulley on the other side when you replace the spindle. Just spun those nuts off without very little pressure at all holding the blade or this pulley. And it turned a, a headache one hour job into a 10 minute job. I will never go back to, <laughs> I like the hammer drill. Okay, so this is, uh, throw that board again, That's about as good as I need it. Now we're going to turn it this way. That's the end of the log will be down here and I have better access to this driver nut. And there you go. That sets in there like that. Now, this came with a pretty long crank handle. I don't intend to use that. I'm either going to put some kind of a socket driver on here, or I might actually use an old drill I got and put a nut driver in the end of it that fits this what looks like three quarter inch. Um, bolt head here. As you can see, this thing will, this will do pretty good I think. I'll be able to move it a little bit here depending on where the log is. I got a couple other spots I can use it on the mill. So let me let me come back here in just a second. I'll kind of do a pan view for you and then we'll end this video. Okay. And the project is finished. So I wanted to come in and give you a little bit of a top view here show you what it looks like in its position there you go you can see the screws down there at the bottom there's four on each side and I've got four going into the top board uh, this is a two and a half ton scissor jack uh, my logs are probably under a thousand pounds so this is way overrated for that and that's what I want I want that safety factor uh, it's got a lot more height than I'll ever need but just in case I ever mount this on the ground somehow, I still think I can get quite a bit of height out of it and lift logs if this location doesn't work out for me. Um, down here on this end, you'll notice that I've got a little bit of room. As I mentioned before, we're going to come in with probably an old drill or something and just buzz that sucker up and down as needed. I'm not going to use the hand crank that came with it because it's just way too long. Designed to be able to reach under a camper with it. <laughs> Well, this ain't no camper. I did have to turn it uh, with the rails instead of, uh, I wanted to go across this way, but this scissor lift is just way too big to fit in between. I don't think it'll matter at all, really. Um, all, the all the weight of the log is going to be straight down, and I'm going to have stops in the back. Now, uh, I do want to announce I've got another little project I'm going to do because of a comment on a video. I had intended to add more log bunks to this mill at some point so that I had log dogs on both sides, or log stops if you will. Uh, I put the stops on the side that I did on purpose because the back side of this mill here, should a log ever come off and go onto the back side, it's going to be hell retrieving that out of there. Uh, I'll basically have to cut the log up and get it out in pieces. 
because uh, I have no means that's going to be able to get something that big out of that small space. So, And I don't want to tear up my mill doing that. So what I think I'm going to do, since I've got extra log stops, is I'm going to reverse a couple of these bunk boards to where I have stops on both sides. And I may also reverse the clamps. Uh, the reason for that, as the guy correctly pointed out, your saw blade comes across this way and that's creating pressure from that side and currently I either use wedges which work really good I'm surprised wooden wedges or I use my clamps to hold that back now when you get down into smaller and smaller logs or excuse me uh, boards and you have very little cant left it does tend to want to slide off just from the pressure of the the blade uh, pushing it that direction um, or if I have a really slick log like a fresh poplar that's got that slime still on it um, it can want to move it off so I think in a future video I'm going to swap a couple of these around uh, I still want dogs on the back side uh, as for the reason I mentioned before okay well I think that's going to do it for today's video it's starting to get dark and I don't want to keep you, but I do appreciate you watching the videos. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see, what you don't. Um, and I'll keep the videos coming as long as you keep watching. Thank you very much.